Good day and thank you for joining us. So in today's video, if you can remember in the past we looked at some analytical geometry. So in today's lesson we're going to look at an example where we use analytical geometry to prove that a certain shape given to us is a quadrilateral. So if we look nicely on the left we have a, a shape given to us. This is A, B, C, D. And so they say on the right side given A is negative 4 and 1. B is negative 1, negative 3, C is 3 and 0, and D is 0 and 4, show that A, B, C, D is a square. So, important thing we need to know now is, what is a square? We know that a square is a parallelogram. So, we'll just write, we know it's a parallelogram. Another thing that we know about squares, so very important what I am doing here is I'm writing down properties that we know that we can use to prove um, that this is a square, right? So we know that a square is a parallel parallelogram. We also know that the sides of a square meet at 90 degrees. Cool? So we know that the sides meet at 90 degrees. And we also know that all the sides of a square are equal. Cool? So these all the sides are equal in length, right? All equal sides. So the first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is prove that this is a parallelogram. Cool? And remember the properties of parallelogram, they have two pairs of opposite, I mean two pairs of parallel sides. My bad. So, what we're going to have to do is show that AB, AD is parallel to BC and that DC is parallel to AB. So, we're going to have to find the gradients for each one of those lines. So, first up, let's go and find the gradient of AD. So, we find the gradient of AD. Remember, our formula is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Once we substitute in our values, so we're using A and D. I'll use D as 2 and A as 1. So we're going to go, it's going to be 4 minus 1 over 0 minus minus 4, which gives us plus 4. Cool. So 4 minus 1 gives me 3 over 4. So that is our gradient for our line AD. So next up, we're going to look for our gradient of line BC, right? Because we want to prove that AD and BC have equal gradients, right? That means that they are parallel. So we're going to find the gradient of the line BD. Once again, our formula Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Cool. So we're finding for line BD. Sorry, my bad. It's line BC. BC is the line that is opposite line AD. So we find the gradient for line BC. So Yes, B, and we use C as 2, okay? So, Y2 will be 0, minus, minus 3, which will be plus 3. And then we also have our X2, which is 0. Sorry, which is 3. And that's going to be minus by our X1, which is minus 1. So, remember, we're doing minus, minus 1, which means it's plus 1. So what we end up getting here is 3 over 4 as our gradient. And so what can we see? We can see that these gradients are equal. And so we can go ahead and say that the gradient of AD is equal to the gradient of BC. Therefore, AD is parallel to BC. Cool, so we've proven now that AD is parallel to BC. What we need to do next is prove that DC is parallel to AB. So we'll find the gradient of line AB first. Okay, so we're going to use A as 1 and B as 2. So we're going to go Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And guys, when I say that I'm using A as 1 and B as 2, it means that from A, I'll get my X1 and Y1, and from B, I'll get my X2 and Y2. Cool. So, I'm going to fetch my Y2 from B. That's going to be minus 3. My Y1 is going to be positive 1, so this will just be minus 1 over here. 
then we have minus 1 as our x2 and that's going to be minus minus 4 which is going to give us plus 4 cool so what we end up getting as our final answer minus 3 minus 1 will give me a minus 4 minus 1 plus 4 will give me a positive 3 and so we get that gradient of minus 4 over 3 and now what we need to do is find the gradient of the other line which is going to be CD or DC doesn't matter which way you put that so we'll make it CD just to make it alphabetical order and we have Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 cool and so what we're going to do now is we're going to substitute in I'm going to use C as 1 and T as 2 okay so Y2 is going to be 4 minus Y1 of 0 and then X2 is 0 minus X1 of 3 cool and so we get a final answer here of 4 over minus 3 cool and by the way guys when we have a numerator that is minus or denominator that's minus that will just change the value of the entire fraction the whole fraction will become negative so technically this is actually just minus 4 over 3 as I did it before and this as well is minus 4 over 3 and so that means that we have equal gradients for both these lines as well so this is gradient of line AB is equal to the gradient of line CD therefore AB is parallel to CD and then we can say next up we can say therefore AB CD is a, a parallelogram and the reason is because it has two pairs of parallel oops sorry of parallel sides cool because we know that the properties of parallelogram is that it has two pairs of parallel sides and so we've just proven there by finding the gradients of all the sides and pairing up the ones that are paired together and seeing the gradients are equal and so we've just proven that this is a parallelogram which is our first step so just go ahead and pause this if you need to take it down because I'm going to be removing it from the screen now. Okay, and so next up what we need to do is we need to, because once once we can see here we have found that it's parallelogram, I have crossed, I have put a tick next to it, so that means that we have completed improving that parallelogram. Now we need to prove that the sides meet at 90 degrees. And so how are we going to go ahead and do that? is by using the formula remember um, m1 times m2 is equal to negative 1 and that applies to perpendicular lines right because remember if two sides meet at 90 degrees another way that we like to say 90 degrees in maths is by saying perpendicular lines cool so that's what we're going to do um, so we're going to obviously times the gradient of one of these lines by the line that's adjacent to it and they should give us a gradient of a negative one cool so let's take the gradient of the line a b times the gradient of the line a d and you should have it down there on your page cool so the gradient of line a b we found to be minus four over three and that's going to be times by the gradient of the line AD, which we found as 3 over 4. So, if we do that, we're going to times together, we get minus 4 times the 3 on top. Or actually, we can just use the bow tie method of cancelling. Remember, we can cancel up and down. We can cancel across as well. So, these will cancel each other out. That we left as just 1. And these will cancel each other out as well. And so what we are left with is that negative over there and just a 1. So it equals negative 1. In the case where, where you times the grains together and they do not equal to negative 1 together, all you end up doing is crossing through the equal to sign. That basically means not equal to. But in this case, uh, negative 4 over 3 times 3 over 4 does equal to negative 1. And so therefore, 
we can say that AB is perpendicular to AD. Once again, I'm going to give you a chance to write this down and then it will be off the screen. Just pause your video so you can copy it down. Okay, cool. So we now have two things crossed of our checklist. We have parallelogram proven and we've also proven that side meet that the sides will meet at 90 degrees. As long as we use two adjacent sides, we only really need to prove that once. Cool. And so that will apply here for when proving that all the sides are equal as well. We'll just have to prove that two of the sides are equal to each other to prove that all the sides are equal to each other, right? And that's because of the lines being parallel and because of the 90 degrees that the lines meet at. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out the length of two of our sides. We'll use AB and AD once again. So we're going to find out the length of AB first. And we know that our formula is the square root of x2 minus x1, and that's going to be squared, plus y2 minus y1, and that's going to be squared as well. So let's go ahead and sub in our values. So we have our square root. What's in the place of x2? So we can use a, b. a will be 1, b will be 2. Remember that tells me what is my x1 and what's my x2. So my x2 in this case will come from b, so that's negative 1. That's going to be minus negative 4, so that's going to be plus 4. Remember, minus minus means plus, and that's going to be squared, plus y2 is going to be minus 3, and that's going to be minus by that 1. That's going to be squared as well. Cool. So in the left bracket, what we end up getting, minus 1 plus 4 gives me positive 3, that's squared, plus minus 3 minus 1 gives me minus 4, that will be squared as well. So what we end up getting here is... 9 plus 16, which gives me, I need to find the square root of 25, which we know is 5. And remember, if there's no units provided to us, we'll always just say it as 5 units. Cool. Next up, we need to prove the length of the line AD. So once again, we'll write that in. We'll write in our formula over here. It's going to be x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Cool, and so what's going to happen from here? We're just going to sub in our values. We'll write out our square root again. So we can use a as 1 and d as 2. So our x2 is going to be 0 minus our x1 of negative 4. So remember, negative, negative, that will give me a positive. That's squared plus... Um, our y2 is going to be 4. Now y1 is going to be 1, so this is just minus 1 squared. It's equal to, it's going to be 4 squared on the left-hand side plus 3 squared on the right-hand side. So we get the square root of 16, and this is plus 9. And so this is 25 once again, and so we get the answer of 5 units. Cool, and as we can see there, both lengths are equal. And so we can say now that therefore AB is equal to AD. And after that, what we can say is therefore ABCD is a square. Cool, so we've just gone through our checklist. We've proven that's a parallelogram, we've proven that the side meets at 90 degrees, and that all sides are equal in length. Cool. And so now once we've proven that ABCD A, B, C, D is a square, we need to say why that is so. So let me just get another color for you guys. So according to the laws when it comes to parallelograms, um, a square is going to be a parallelogram, which we prove that the shape is a parallelogram. So it's a parallelogram with one pair of adjacent sides that are equal. Cool. So one pair of adjacent sides that are equal. That's A, B, and A, D that we proved. And also, so just put a comma there, and one 
90 degree angle. Cool. And that's also what we proved, right? We proved that there was a 90 degree angle in this shape. So as you can see there, how our properties of the square helped us to prove that this was a square. So once again, we said first that it was a parallelogram that, that a square is, right? So first, a square is a parallelogram. We went there and proved that by finding the gradients of all the sides and the opposite side had to have the equal gradient, right? Which means they were parallel. So we could prove that it was a parallelogram. That was first. And then we said that a sides will meet at 90 degrees. So we found that A, D, A, B, and A, D, they met at 90 degrees. So we checked that off. And then finally, what we did here is we proved that there are a pair of adjacent sides that are equal. That is A, B, and A, D. And so that comes into the final part here when we have to say, okay, therefore A, B, C, D is a square. Okay, why do we say that? Because it's a parallelogram with one pair of adjacent sides and one angle that is equal to 90 degrees cool so that's the that's basically going to be the steps when you are trying to prove that something is a parallelogram or a specific type of shape right that's you're going to be proving first that the, the opposite sides are parallel or yeah depending on what type of shape you're using you're just going to look at the different type of properties of that specific shape and then go ahead and prove those properties through calculation and at the end use your your properties of parallelogram to help you answer for your reason. Anyways, guys, I hope that this video has been informative and you are able to understand how to prove that certain shapes are what they are. So if they give you a random shape, how you can go ahead and prove that it is whatever they're asking to prove. In this case, a square. Properties of the square down. Prove those properties. And voila, that is your answer. Cool. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I hope that this was informative and you enjoyed it. Goodbye. Have a good one.